Second Sea Lord, thank you very much for joining us today. We spoke to the first Sea Lord when the defence cuts were still very fresh in people's mind. And I know the dust has now settled and a number of concerns are coming to the fore, mainly focused on allowances, pensions and redundancies. With that in mind, has the Tri-Service Resettlement Organisation been given an uplift in courses and personnel to help people through these tough times? Yes, the resettlement process had a, has had an uplift in resources. Uh, the Career Transition Partnership, with whom we are engaged, uh, has itself in increased its resources, so both in terms of the numbers of courses it will run and the, uh, and the locations in which their courses will run to make them more accessible to our people. So there is an awful lot of support out there? There is an awful lot of support out there, and it's not just from the Career Transition Partnership, but also from uh, organisations like the Naval Families Federation and from the charitable sector as a whole. And the Naval Families Federation, of course, has got a strong recent past of engaging with families to help to understand their particular needs and concerns and to act upon them either directly or through reference to, to people like myself. Talking about redundancies in general, how are they going to be spread across the rate and rank structure? About two-thirds of the overall size of the reduction uh, will come from across the rank and rates structure, uh, officers and uh, ratings, according to the uh, complements of, of the ships themselves. The second uh, element of the redundancy programme, that will come from the headquarters structures, from the training areas, from the non-deployable components of the Royal Navy. Will any special dispensations be given to people who are serving abroad on operations? No non-applicants uh, who are within six months of deploying to Operation Herrick or on Operation Herrick itself will be considered for redundancy. Uh, for those applicants, well, they will complete their operational tour uh, and they will only begin their notice period once they've completed their operational tour leave. The second uh, element of those operations, of course, are those on the many other operations which the Royal Navy are contributing to around the world. And again, that's an area where the career managers themselves will be handling individuals on a case-by-case -case basis. Ultimately, then, in the future, how are these redundancies going to affect people's promotion prospects? Well, this period of drawdown following the Defence Review is going to have an effect on promotion opportunities, certainly in the, in the short term. Thereafter, all our experience tells us that these promotion flows return back to normal once the reductions have been made. How do you balance Tri-Service Covenant on the one hand with all the cuts and redundancies on the other? Because it doesn't really seem as though it makes sense. The uh, Armed Forces Covenant is there to provide long-term betterment for our families and their servicemen. The reductions in allowances pay freezes and the studies that are taking place into pensions are driven by completely different factors and there is one above all else which is the state of the national economy. To that end therefore every public sector has had to take some reductions. The government has announced that benefits will increase in line with inflation this year. Is anyone at the MOD arguing for the same for your rate of pay? It will be difficult. It will be really difficult because many people will be taking home less than they're taking home at the moment. But I can assure you that the overall uh, examination of the allowances package, for example, has particularly taken into account the needs of our lower paid people and those who are on operations. Um, for, so, for example, the operation allowance uh, will remain intact the allowances that our seagoing community are benefiting from will remain intact. And if there are reductions, they will be staged over a period of time to reduce the impact. We have done all we can to reduce the negative impact on our people and their families. The government has committed itself to a recovery uh, once the economy itself recovered, uh, where those who have taken part in these difficult times will be rewarded. That was a very significant announcement made by this government at the time that it set off on this path. Have you got a message then for everybody now going on into 2011? The Royal Navy will remain just as relevant deployed around the world uh, in 2011, 12 and beyond as it has been in the past. There will be terrific opportunities for individuals, uh, great satisfaction from jobs well done, and there will be opportunities in a very professional naval service well into the future. So for those who remain with the naval service into the mid middle and long term, uh, there is a great career ahead of you. The challenge, of course, is that the next year or two is going to bring uh, big uncertainty. But what I can assure all our people is that their concerns are uppermost in my mind, in First Sea Lord's mind, and in the Navy Board's mind. 
and whenever a decision is taken, it will be taken only after the most careful consideration and will be communicated to our people just as soon as that decision is taken.